and welcome to Hot Issues. This week, we are practically going to talk about everything. We're going to talk about the MPP, its origins, where it is today, where it's likely to go. We may even do an assessment of the Mahama administration and perhaps touch on the outbreak of meningitis in many parts of the country. Welcome to Hot Issues. <laughs> Welcome back to Health Issues, and as I indicated from the beginning, this week we are talking about many things. We are talking about the origins of the new patriotic party, we are talking about its current state, and we are talking about its future. We may probably even venture into an assessment of the Mahama administration, and we'll talk about health issues, and many, many practical issues. And aren't we very, very privileged to have with us in the studio, Dr. Richard Anani, a founding member of the New Patriotic Party, former minister in, in several sectors and so on. Sir, you're welcome to the studio. Thank you. So since you left office as minister, what have you been doing? Uh, well, I have continued to serve my people as the member of parliament for the Inshaya Su constituency in Kumasi. And uh, serving your people in parliament also means serving your country. And uh, we've made some of the experiences that we've had to Ghana over the years come to bear on our contributions in the house and especially at the committee levels. Did you win your primaries? Uh, no, not this time. Why? That's an internal party matter, and normally I prefer to keep it internal. Okay. But sir, you're also a medical practitioner. Yeah. Are you still...? Um, you know, uh, in 2001, uh, His Excellency President Kofo appointed me to serve in the health sector. And serving in the health sector, I thought it would not be right for me to continue to hold on to my practice. And therefore, I decided to act outside of my practice. But it's still there. Currently, you won't call it the first care hospital. And it's a very good hospital, and I'm sure a lot of people have been taking advantage of its presence. But you are not practicing. I have opted to stay out mm -hmm. for some other reasons. But it's possible. I may want to go back because that's where and that's what I was trained in. And so what are you going to do when you finally leave Parliament? Uh, there are so many areas that I may be serving. Uh, I think over the years we've gained so much experience and uh, I believe that experience must not be lost to the good people of this nation. And so yes, as a doctor, I may yes occasionally be working in a hospital, but there are so many areas, especially in the health sector, and especially also in the transportation sector. Because uh, when President Kufo gave me the opportunity to serve in the transport sector, I thought uh, I learned so much. And uh, I believe uh, that can also uh, be an area where the little experience that I garnered over the years can also be made available to the nation. Uh, I currently also happen to be the vice chairman of the Afri network of parliamentary committees on health in Africa. Mm. And uh, there too, uh, we make our experiences come to bear on the entire continent. And I believe that these areas are areas that I will continue to serve through. Now, I want to take you back, yeah. back into recent history. Yeah. It is said that you are one of the people who founded the New Patriotic Party. You are a founding member of the New Patriotic Party. Is that true? Could uh, you um, you know, I think in humility, I served towards the evolution of a party I believed in. And I want to believe that it should be led that way. Uh, you know, it, it, it looks a bit um, too much for one to say, I am a founder. I, yes, I served in the evolution. Agreed. But are you I a founding <laughs> member? Uh, Did you know that title, that title founding member has now lost its meaning in the party. So you'll find that Originally, it was the foundation members. Yeah. 
and then later on for certain reason i always dan buche uh, is the one that i normally talk to that he was the one who uh, thought there was no need to create that division mm -hmm. and thought everything should be classed as a founding member mm -hmm. and you know that uh, when the title founding member was eventually opened up it became a different ball game mm -hmm. so i still had always wished that those who were involved in the founding of the party could still be called the foundation members because i think it gives people uh, the right to know the rules played by all these people i remember you being very active in the dankwa buzia club yeah did it have anything to do with the new patriotic party uh, you know, that's where a lot of people may be confused about when it comes to the evolution of the party. Yes, we have to uh, give credit to the founder of the Dankwa Buzia Club. Uh, he was a great journalist in Kumasi, you know, the pioneer newspaper. Uh, he had been the uh, editor of the pioneer. He played quite a big role in the history of the evolution of the UP tradition. And uh, when, at a point in time, things seem to have gone down because of the long tenure of the Provisional National uh, Defense Council uh, and getting to the point where there was clarity that possibly political activity was going to come up, uh, he decided with some friends to form the Dankwa Buzia Club. But this Dankwa Buzia Club uh, was basically centered in Kumasi. And uh, the people who played quite a major role in them, many of them are no more, but I still think their names are still uh, worth mentioning. Nana Alexa Sabos, Mr. Amobidia, Dr. John Belson, Mr. Uh, Abimenu, and then we have those who are alive, like President Kufo, uh, Dr. Adi Kufo, and little ones like us, because that time we were the young ones, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we were the movers, and the, we were the ones who did the legwork. And then I also want the name of Reverend Dr. Santinchi to be mentioned because when the club was found, at the time, you know, things were not as it is today. It was difficult to even get a place where you may have meetings. And Reverend Dr. Santinchi was the head of the Methodist Church in Ashanti. And he was the one who permitted use of the Methodist School at, in Kumasi. K.O. Uh, Methodist. The, the K.O. Methodist School, as yeah. you, you know. And uh, maybe without that, meeting of the club would have been difficult and so we did play our roles and uh, i believe that changed up the sentiments of the grassroots of the party mm -hmm. however the real founding of the party was different how, how the, different? the founding the party originally started in mr victor Wusu's home in Accra. but you see historically in the past uh, you may have known that way back in 1979 uh, we had some little problems and uh, as time after the 79 elections there was a need for like minor parties to come together mm -hmm. and so um, the UNC uh, the PFP the third force party the action congress and all these other parties decided to come together and in the negotiations I think there was a little problem with the positioning. You know, uh, Dr. Abeda Samoa became the general secretary mm -hmm. of the All People's Party, which evolved from the negotiations. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, our good old BJ Darucha had been the secretary general of the Popular Front Party. Um, I think that may not have been the best for the period. And so, in the beginning, when the meetings were in Mr. Victor's home, uh, you couldn't get all the people to come. And so it was shifted to Mr. Kirkus home mm -hmm. as the new trial grounds. And Mr. Victor continued to chair the meetings. And uh, Mr. Darucha gave him all the support to bring the party into being. And, you know, because of the past, these are some of the maybe painful parts of our evolution. Because of the past, in the beginning, mm -hmm. it was virtually a PFP affair. Mm -hmm. Until at the very late stage, when um, there was the input that, well, why don't we 
invite all those who left the PFP or who left the tradition to form another party. So you're, it was you're talking basically about those who left to form the, the UNC. UNC. Because the thing is, uh, if you look back, you have found that in late 80s and 1980 and then 81, the All People's Party was formed. Mm -hmm. So that meant that maybe we would have left the division behind. But it appeared it was still there. Mm -hmm. And that's how come when the party was being formed, you still found that maybe not all were involved. And mm -hmm. uh, it was very late when the party had really gotten uh, mm -hmm. together. When the, the door was again opened for all to come in. And they did come in. And by the time when the party was outdoored, who have said that, yes, it was a united party. But it would appear that the Dankwa Buzia clubs formed the grassroots foundation of uh, the party. Yeah, that, that is why I said we have to commend the founders of the Dankwa Buzia club mm -hmm. for the great work that the Dankwa Buzia club did to change the spirit of the tradition. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it used also to be more of a Kumasi affair and uh, so the, that's why I said the little ones thought there was a need for us to push it countrywide. Mm -hmm. I'll hear mention uh, Chairman Sabonsu. Uh, we got the vehicle from Dr. Amakutufo for Chairman Sabonsu to do the rounds in Ashanti at the district level. Some of us had to play the national rule to get mm. the countrywide spread because we Originally, also had a group of young men of like minds. We used to call Victor ourselves. Victor Junior. Uh, yes, uh, the Progress Youth Club, mm -hmm. and uh, this club was headed by. Uh, well, I, I normally call him Old Man. That's our good old uh, uh, former member of Parliament for Yendi, and former Minister of the Interior, Yakub. Uh, you know Al Hassan. Yeah, Al Hassan Yakub. Yes. Yeah. He was the leader of our group and therefore that vehicle was the one that we used to spread the Dankwa Buzia club. Uh, mm -hmm. Sitting in Kumasi I could do uh, most of the linkages and make sure that at least uh, the regions uh, with our leadership mm -hmm. from Yakub Alassan mm -hmm. uh, spread the Dankwa Buzia club. But you have people like Victor Sujinia like you said, mm -hmm. Dan Boche, mm -hmm. and uh, so many Idris may so rest in, mm -hmm. pe uh, in peace. You, you remember Idris? I do. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so many of us were playing our major roles in the mm -hmm. regions using the youth group called the Progress Youth Club mm -hmm. and then to Jinja, the Danko Business Club. And that one, I believe, helped to create a big awareness mm -hmm. of the coming into being mm -hmm. of a party based on the Dan Kabuzia tradition. But it is not the club that is used to form the party. Mm. And I do remember on the inauguration of the party at the University of Ghana, the founder of the Dan Kabuzia club and the group were invited to uh, Mr. B.J. Darote's home. And he made a comment, and that had always stayed with me. He said, you know, political parties, are formed for political power. You, you do not use clubs mm -hmm. to seek for political power. Mm -hmm. And it's something that's been ringing mm. in my head ever since, that you do not use clubs to seek for political power, but rather political parties, because that is the essence of a political party. Mm. Yeah. The Santa Youth Association. Uh, How did it play in all of this? Uh, you know, the Dankwa Buzia Club, foundation you know, of the I, Patriotic Party. I, I, so. I, I was not the president of the Asante uh, oh, I see. Youth, uh, but my role is to <laughs> ensure <laughs> that these groups come into being. Yeah. Uh, you know, in school, we had a very funny experience in, at the university in 1979, uh, coming into office of uh, his Excellency Fry Lefton Rollins. And uh, he came to the university. He addressed us. After the address, some of us went out to have a chat with him. 
And during the chat, he asked the question, and that is the genesis of the Asante Students' Union. Uh, some of these things, we don't normally talk about them. Mm -hmm. uh, when he asked the question, what it should do for us, one of the gentlemen made some inputs, and they were, I think, most unfortunate. And that is what got us to think that, well, if we do not protect our elders, they will go. They will be made to go. Mm -hmm. And after our elders are gone, it will be us. So it means that we must protect our elders. Mm -hmm. And in so doing, also protect ourselves. And that's the reason for the formation of the Asante Students' Union. In fact, I, I, on that day, I was with uh, a mate of my classmate, medical school. Uh, he became our ambassador to the United States eventually. Uh, His Excellency. Kwame Bear, where to say, mm -hmm. we're classmates. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were there. And because of what happened there, we thought there was a need to form something. So straight from where we were, we went to his hall. My hall was Independence Hall. And everybody knows Independence Hall is a, a hall of gentlemen. Mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't go to start such a thing there. So we went to the Katanga Hall. Mm -hmm. And that's when uh, that Asante Students Union was born. Now, it was born out of that exigency. And therefore, the focus was to fight for at least respect for all of us. And that is also what got medical doctors like some of us into politics. Maybe you have been concentrating on mm -hmm. our med medical practice. But we saw the need for us to get involved. And because of that group, when eventually the Lehman government was removed, we teamed up with our colleagues from the CPP, because we all believe in one thing, mm -hmm. multi-party democracy. Mm -hmm. And that's how come we formed the Progress Youth Club. Mm -hmm. And that is what, over the years, because it should be a country-wide institution. Mm -hmm. And that is what we used to fight for our democratic ideals. And so from 1983, there, 84 onwards, we had the Progress Youth Club, and we're meeting from one part of the country to the other, the other at least talking about our thinking and why there's a need for democracy uh, for this country. And it is also this club that I said was used to spread out the Dankwa Bolivia Club. And this club and the, uh, you know, the Asante students, you know, was a, an Asante-based mm -hmm. group. We finished university. And so doesn't mean that that was the end of our activities. So we formed the Alumni Association of that club. And that Alumni Association was the one that was also helping our younger colleagues mm -hmm. and other like-minded groups, and also uh, helping through the uh, Progress Youth Club to firm up our political beliefs. And when it became clear that there was to be democracy in the country, we thought there was a need for us to play our role. That I was the president of the Asante Students, you know, Alumni Association. So we found But there was also the Asante yeah, Youth coming. Association. Yes. Yeah. Asante Youth Association had been there since the late 40s. Mm -hmm. But then it had gone down in its operations. So we found it necessary to help to galvanize these institutions. So we helped in the bringing out the Asante Youth Association, the Asante Kotoko Society, mm -hmm. and all these like minded groups. Mm -hmm. And I think it was good for us in the country. Mm -hmm. Because you remember when the Right Honorable Justice Annan, may his soul rest in peace, was asked to go around to collate views of the people of the nation as to whether we want multi-party democracy or not. Mm -hmm. The first two regions said no yeah. to democracy. Now, it is the activity of our grouping by lobbying all these institutions. That's how come when Justice Annan came to Kumasi, all the groups came up with one, mm -hmm. uh, would I say, uh, sang, and the mm -hmm. sang was multi multi-party democracy was good for Ghana. Mm -hmm. And because of that, uh, in humility, I still want to mm -hmm. think that it is because of that, that's how come the other regions were emboldened mm -hmm. to also ask for multi-party democracy. Because you know that those periods were not the times when you could just stick out on your neck and say what you like. But maybe because of the experiences of our youthful group and because of what we have been doing over the years, uh, we found it necessary to do it. And that's the role and the little role that we believe we, we played 
uh, for the evolution of multi-party democracy for Ghana. So I was rather than the president of the Sunday Students you know, Alumni Association. Mm -hmm. And uh, our role was to galvanize all the other groups together. So the, the, the formation of the new patriotic party, I'd like to find out what ideals motivated it. Was it just an effort to build an electoral machine? Or there were some higher ideals as well? But see, I'll call you CPP. Even though today we have other offshoots of the CPP groupings, they still are guided by certain ideals. In the same way, even though the UP tradition started long ago, these ideals still are what bring us together. So like-minded people definitely will come together. And they are together based on the same ideals of our past and our forebears. Mm -hmm. That's what, up to today, we still hold on to. Uh, not many of our people are comfortable when I keep on saying that we are a conservative party. We believe in the tried and the tested, and we believe that the human person is the most important in all that we do. And I think in all what our tradition will do, you will find that these are what ring, and these are what take us in all what we do. Some people keep on asking, but you people are capitalists. But you can't, uh, President Kufour comes in and he says to a national health insurance, he says to uh, mass transportation, he says mm -hmm. to this, these are the elements that make the conservative system work, the capitalist system work. And indeed, when you talk about the history of the evolution of health insurance, the history of the evolution of social security and others, they didn't come from the socialist uh, milieu. They came out of a capitalist system under the German Kaiser. Mm -hmm. And his, uh, he used his chancellor to bring up all these things in an attempt to stall the spread of socialism in Europe then in the 1860s. Mm. So it is never true that so, uh, and health insurance, social security and others come from the socialist milieu. Mm. It comes from what we believe in. And it's because we believe that you must be all right. Hello and welcome back to Hot Issues. And we are in conversation with Dr. Richard Anani. Uh, you do know that Dr. Richard Anani was Minister of Health in the Kufu administration. He became Minister of Transport, he's been many things, and he's a medical practitioner. Now, sir, the new Patriotic Party has been formed. It's been in existence all of these years. What is your evaluation? Um, it's a dynamic institution. And definitely over the years, you expect its dynamism to show. However, if we were to talk about today, I would think that some of the things happening today are very alien to the tradition. It's a tradition that respects the viewpoints of ordinary people, individuals. You know that I said the individual is the center of our beliefs, and therefore you must respect the viewpoints. We form parties not out of families not out of brothers or out of friends. We form parties out of people who share similar opinions. And the reason why in all parties in the world you have factions is because of the fact that even though we have the same viewpoints, the way we want to approach it may be different. And that's how come we tend to have factions. So there's nothing wrong having a party as dynamic as the New Patriotic Party and having factions in them. As long as we all believe in the same thing, in carrying the mantle. So this has been what has been going on over the years. But I think that in very recent times, some few things must have happened which I still think are very alien. And I believe the party will purge itself of these things. What are some of these alien practices or tendencies in the uh, patriotic party? You know, I said respectful viewpoints. When you are in a party and uh, you accept the fact that it is a party made up of all manner of people, you will also appreciate 
that not all of them will share your view. This is one of the major things that some of us think seem to be going on currently, which may not uh, augur well for the party. But because of its dynamism, that's also why I believe this party will purge itself of whatever is alien and ensure that the true beliefs of the party succeed. The most significant things that have happened in the party over the last year or so has to do with the suspension of your national chairman, the suspension of your second vice chairman and general secretary. Has this got anything to do with, with respect for individual viewpoints and so on? Um, if you look at charges proffered against them, then you want to believe that there is something amiss. Because we believe that whatever happens, we should be able to sort things out at home. And my worry is that, you see, when this thing happens in the MPP, we should not be thinking that it is just the MPP. We should be looking at the entire democratic terrain in Ghana. And that if hap it happens in the MPP and the NDC think that, oh, this is just an MPP affair, tomorrow it can also happen in the NDC. Next time, it could even happen to a presidential candidate. And that's why some of us think that uh, the party may have to sit up and purge itself of whatever may not inure to the benefit of the democratic dispensation that we are in. I do know and I do have a strong belief that this party and the other political parties are capable of making this possible. Uh, you see, when going back, uh, I think in my uh, earlier discussion, I may have uh, slipped not mentioning uh, the founder of uh, the Dankwa Wizard Club, Mr. Atak Rejima. I may also not have mentioned that in the course of it, because that's where the confusion is, in the course of it, some people thought they could use the Dankwa Wizard Club to form a political party. And that was going to be different from our political party. Mm -hmm. And uh, the role that some of us had to play was to make sure that didn't happen. Mm. Um, the Dan Kobe's Club was supposed to have a national congress in Kumasi. Little us at that time found it that it's not going to be good for the future of the party that was evolving and wait for which meetings were being held in Accra and also in Kumasi. So we had to find a way of stalling that. I played my role. In fact, I had to communicate this to Mr. Victor Usu, who was then chairing our meetings. Because that particular meeting, I was not going to be able to attend. And the reason was that I was still at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital, and I was on duty for that weekend. And the meetings were on Fridays. And so I had to come earlier to discuss with him this. He, in, he assured me that if I was not going to come to a meeting, something would be held. Uh, the meeting would be held, and something would come up. And so a messenger would be sent to me. In fact, uh, if Nana Akufado will remember, he was the one who was sent to me. I was in the theater when he came. And the message was, let all those regions hold their congresses in their regions and not come for the National Congress. I'm not sure whether Nana may have appreciated the meaning, but the meaning was that we were to stop the National Congress of the Dan Kabuzia Club. Because my, uh, one of my mentors is Dr. John Belsing. Mm -hmm. uh, he's quite a big influence on the youth. People did not appreciate that. And I knew that if we permitted that to happen, Abelson could easily take over the Danko Bizia Club, convert into a party, and then there will be the evolving party in the boardroom, and then we are going to have the same problems of 1979. Mm. So I had to call all the regions to hold their congresses in their regions. And uh, maybe as at today, I still believe that is why somebody like Reverend Dr. Asantinchi has never understood me. Mm. And he had always thought that I uh, was that I was naughty, not permitting the National Congress to come on. But I did it in the best, uh, with the best of belief that we must have one party and that that should not be permitted to happen. And uh, because that National Congress could not come on, but I had to tell the meeting afterwards that I was the one who stopped it. Mm. And that's how come we had one party. 
And uh, I believe it is the same kind of sacrifices that many of us have to make to make sure this party, which has evolved over the years, also continue to hold on to its ideals so that strange things are not permitted to come in to disrupt the evolution of this great party. So your suspended national chairman and his second vice chairman are in court. Are you comfortable with that situation? Or is there any other remedy beyond the courtroom? You see, that's why I said some things have happened over the past few months which are most alien to our tradition. I have believed that a lot of things could easily have been resolved within the party. You see, you are being in the podcast system for quite a long time. You know, during President Kufo's era, we had the G15 group. And what mm -hmm. didn't they do to President Kufo? But he thought the, the game was on the field. He was always on the ground. Respected the viewpoints expressed by the G15. Mm -hmm. And then the day when the people of Ghana conferred on him the uh, powers of a presidency, he appointed them to serve in positions of trust. Not saying that, oh, you are the people who did this or this or that. Because he knows that they are all, all of them coming together and make that party what mm -hmm. it was and what it is. And I do believe that if we were to look at it historically and then even project it into the future, we will see that the party was more important. An Anani. Look, there's there, really there's a suggestion that what is happening is a direct manifestation of a certain rivalry which allegedly developed between an Edubu Ahine faction and a Kufuo faction. Is that true? You see, there are so many things that, <laughs> so many interpretations that will be put to it. But ask yourself, is that what the founders of the party wanted? Mm -hmm. And then when you look into it, which some people want us to uh, maybe cover up. To bury. Yes. I think sometimes we, are, we must, sorry, I'm a surgeon by training. And so I don't, I see things as they are. And then I think when, you, when there has to be removed, you remove it. When there has to be cut, you cut it. People must see what it is. And then, out of that, come to terms with it. For those things that must be seen, they must be seen. If they even have to be covered, they should be known before it is covered. So that we know that we are buried this thing here. Mm -hmm. And that for posterity, either you do not step there or you have to open to see what is there. Mm -hmm. It helps us for now and for the future. When people are talking about rivalry, I think it, it goes back to the 1979 happenings. That's what I personally think. That Some people even tell you that it goes even beyond to the 69s. I've, you know, I've had the fortune of working with the elders of the party as a student. Uh, my, I think my first encounter with Professor Buzi, I was when I was a little boy, when he was this, uh, he was the speech. Uh, he came in to give the uh, speech at the Opokuwari School. And my brother was there, so I had to go there. He was receiving the prize. You know, Opokuwari and my my town, my hometown, mm -hmm. I just closed. What struck me was that in the course of delivering the speech, it started raining. And everybody started running to the dining hall. That the, 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 the thing was happening at the four courts. And everybody ran to the dining hall. There was this speech maker, carried his chair. So I rushed to him and said, sir, give me your chair. He said, oh, can you pick one let us go? That has always had a big impact that on me. That was Dr. Buzia. That is Dr. Buzia. And so I've always had that belief that that's what politics is all about. Mm. Now, sir, we, we, we'll be going for a break pretty soon. Yeah. But I'd like you to evaluate the performance of the Muhammad administration in relation to all that is happening in the New Patriotic Party and the chances of the New Patriotic Party. Um. Every government has its priorities. And I want us all to always have that on our minds. I do not expect the President Mahama government to do what 
an MPP government will want to do. And therefore, if you are looking at the President Mahama government, you must look at vis-a-vis -vis the priorities of that government. Are they meeting up to their priorities? If they are, that's what they presented to the people of Ghana. And if that is what they presented and they are delivering on them, what can you do? They are delivering on, the, on their mandate. A new patriot government will look at it differently. And they will also have their mandate. And they will also have their priorities. So I, you hardly ever find me talk about whether a government has done well or not done well. That's the reason. Mm -hmm. Because my understanding is that every government has its priorities. And the issue is for the masses to decide whether they have delivered on what they presented to them. Mm. What about the MPP? What, how bright do you think its chances are in the upcoming elections? Uh, I would not want to let people think that it is easy to win an election. Neither would I also want to be one of those people who would want to push the idea that the failings of one is a positive for the other. No. Mm -hmm. I think it's through your own hard work and through your own issues and through your engagement with the people that will make the difference. I want to urge my party to engage the people with our issues. Mm. One of the first things I learned from President Gufo is you see, the major difference between us and the other side is management. What? Management. Management? Yeah. Because tell me, what are the NDC doing which are so different from what the MPP will do? The figures may be the same. May, may be, the figures may be different, but the policies appear to be the same. Similar. So it's about the managing of the situation which makes the difference. So we must make it clear in all that we do for people to see the difference. Mm. Hello, welcome back to Hot Issues. And we are in conversation with Dr. Richard Anani, a leading, strong member of the New Patriotic Party, a former minister and a, a doctor of, of repute. Now, sir, you're a medical practitioner. I'm sure you are following the outbreak of meningitis. What is the problem? Uh, well, I'm a medical practitioner. I'm a member of parliament. I'm the ranking member on the Committee of Health. So whatever happens on the health terrain, it's our concern. Um, what is happening uh, to me is not a very strange thing. Uh, you know, in time past, we used to talk about the cerebrospinal meningitis, CSM, at this time of the year. Uh, you see that this time we're not talking about that. Mm -hmm. Question why? Because over the years, the various policies and actions of the health sector have been able to bring it under containment. And you know that when you are able to suppress something, some other thing in the disease terrain, that's how it is. Some other <laughs> thing crops up. But I think there's also a misunderstanding of the concept or the ideas of meningitis. Mm -hmm. Meningitis per se is not a strange condition. Doctors see meningitis every day. But it's the upset of this type of meningitis which is uh, a worry to us. So in the in times past, as I said, it was the cerebrospinal meningitis, and now it's the pneumococcal meningitis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there are other types of you know, meningitis can be caused by some fungi, it can be caused by some viruses, it can be caused by some bacteria. And every day, if you go to the hospitals, you see the doctors contending with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the upset of the pneumococcal meningitis is what has become an issue for us. And it's all because this is not what we used to be having mm -hmm. in this period over the years, in the kind of uh, shape that it has appeared today. And because of the various variants, uh, the type of variants that it has, sometimes it's difficult to uh, determine what types are causing the condition. But when they appeared, because at this time of the year, we tend to have the spread of meningitis, uh, the health sector uh, was aware of it. Mm -hmm. and therefore were able to take handle of it. But you see, because of uh, 
the media today, it's always easy for people to hear about things that are happening. And so when the talk of maybe 10 people have gotten the condition, straight away spread to the public. And sometimes the public may become panicky. panicky. Yeah. But these are issues which the health sector have been containing. And I believe they have. And for last week, the health committee met the minister on health. And today, we asked him to come today to give a statement. And today he gave a statement on that. Yeah. Now, sir, it, it appears, it is being said that uh, we have occurrences in Ashanti and it's unusual. Is that unusual? Ashanti and Brohafu. No, you see, uh, look at the climate. Uh, people mm -hmm. talk about climate change, uh, uh, change in our uh, terrain and other matters. And so it's not so much, you know, it started in the Thai area. That's quite close to the north. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And, you know, today because of transportation and other factors, one condition occurs here within the shortest possible time is that it spreads around. And the spread normally is because of the transport network that we have. Um, so it's not to some of us too strange. And you'll find that even when the doctors get a case, they will want to trace to see where that person may have come from mm -hmm. and who their contacts are. And it's because of the same thing of transportation and ease of movement of peoples. Are we managing the outbreak well? Yeah, I think we are. And I think very soon it will be brought under. I heard about the shortage of antibiotics. <laughs> uh, you may have heard about the shortage, but that's not to say that <laughs> there are none. Yeah. But they are. Yeah. And they are being used. Yeah. And you know that normally uh, some of these conditions, you will have to do some tests in the lab to determine the type of antibiotic that the organism may be sensitive to. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are times when, uh, I think when they were doing their, uh, their test, they found that in some region, even though we know that the condition is sensitive to this, you go to the other region, they found it was not sensitive to that, but sensitive to another. So mm -hmm. it all depends on the test that we do mm -hmm. and the sensitivity test that we do that will help us to determine that. Mm -hmm. And maybe because of the sensitivity test, some particular antibiotic may not have been as available as the others. But that's not to say that antibiotics are not available. Now, sir, in nine months, we'll be going for an election. Described by many as a very crucial election, what do you expect? What should we do as Ghanaian people? You know, what outcomes are you expecting? Sometimes I find it difficult to appreciate some of these things. You said many describe it as a crucial election. Why is it crucial? Well, because some people somehow think that there's a make or break election. I don't know why. Oh, so that's why you describe it as crucial. Yeah. Uh, because I think that we've been having elections, and it is about the practice of our democracy and about the strengthening of our democracy. And uh, I believe that that is what is most important. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what is most important. The need for us to continue building upon our democracy, strengthen our democracy in peace. I believe these are the most important things. And when I had earlier said engagement with the people, it is by engaging the people, getting one's message across, that makes it possible for the people to appreciate and understand what you stand for. And it is what you stand for, and their belief and their perceptions of you, which will make the difference. President Kufo was able to go around the country when uh, His Excellency President Rawlings had been in power for a long time. Mm -hmm. And the table stand. So it's about presenting your case. But you can only present by engagement. And when you have engaged the people, with all the alternatives. The people of Ga Ghana are very understanding and they will want the best for the, the country. So I believe they will choose the best for the country. Uh, are you expecting a change on November 7th? That's what I want. <laughs> is that what you're going to get? That is what I want and that's why I want us to work towards it. It's, a, it's not about wishing. I don't believe in the wishes. I believe in working towards something and getting it. So I would not want our party to sit and expect 
things work or waste as some things happen the way we want it. I believe it is for us to work to it. When we do, we can make the change and bring the kind of change that we want into the country, like it happened under President Kofo. So thank you very much for coming much to the studio. Sir. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Now, viewers, we'll be in a conversation with Dr. Richard Anani, former Minister of Health, former Minister of Transport, and an active member of the New Patriotic Party, currently a member of Parliament, and so on. And we've spoken about many things. We've spoken about the origins of the New Patriotic Party, its current state. We've spoken about the outbreak of meningitis and all. Hope you enjoyed it. And please be reminded that the best on television is on TV3.